Hey guys, I'm Aaron. Today we're going to talk about taking walls up to ceilings in SketchUp. So we've talked, we, I, I can't remember how many videos we've made. We made quite a few of them that go into the process of drawing walls. And there's, we've talked about how there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. You can extrude, draw outlines, push, pull them up. Um, as many different ways to draw walls. There are people out there probably, I don't know. But what comes up a lot, the questions that come up is, well, what if I want that wall, which is now just a extruded rectangle, what if I want that to go up and follow my ceilings? Um, fortunately, it's not a difficult process and we'll take a look at doing it right now. All right, so there's several ways to do this. So we may, we may I got a couple examples here of different situations. Um, starting with the most simple. I just have this one plane, continuous, shoots up to the left. I know this is a steep slope. You don't have to remind me of that. This current slope is coming off the outside corner. Um, and what happens if I just want all my walls to follow it? Well, there's a couple things to consider. Um, first thing, simple. What is this wall going to actually look like? Is this wall going to slope up here? Is this wall going to be flat? Do I need to break this like this and then let this slope up, but this not? That's for you to figure out. Like, what do you actually need out of the model? Are you just looking for a surface that touches and closes all the space up? Or are you looking for framing, what it's actually going to look like? I'm going to say for what I'm doing right now, I want uh, I want this to um, just meet up with the ceiling plane. So I'm doing an architectural, a renderable model. I just need my walls to hit the ceiling and that's it. So there's a couple things I could do. One thing I could do is I could start grabbing... Uh, I, this is in its own group, so I'm going to double click to enter the walls. I could, this could get a little messy, but I could, in theory, grab this wall, or this edge, excuse me. I'm going to move it, I'm going to constrain it to vertical, and I'm going to slide it up till it hits this plane. See that? This is going to get messy because it is going to start breaking some stuff. And then I could take this one right here and move it vertically as well, hit the up arrow key to lock to vertical, and take that up till it hits the plane. And then the last one is this outside side. Same thing, I'll move that vertically, lock it to vertical until it comes up and hits the plane. When all is said and done, I have all my walls now up to the top. But that was that was a little, little yucky. I didn't really care for that too much because I did break it. So what I'd wanna come in and do now is I'd wanna come back and erase my different edges that were broken by moving that up. Probably not the ideal solution on this particular model, um, just because it is so simple. That would work on something that's a more cut up solution, but in this, let's let's go ahead and just undo a bunch of times till I get back to flat. What I could do instead, since this is so simple, is I could just take this and run it past like that. Then I could grab all these surfaces, right click, intersect face with model, that'll break it where it hits that plane, and then I can just grab this, did not break. You notice when I grab all this, it still shows all this connected. So it didn't actually break at the edge right here. So my lines are real close together, but it didn't know if it was actually crossing or not. So I might have to do a little extra work and come in here and go click, click. I might have to trace the outside edge. The other thing I could have done is I could have extended my ceiling plane so it was longer and then lapped past. There, if I grab all that, I hit delete. That actually created a surface on the inside. I'll go ahead and delete that too. And there's my walls running up to that single ceiling plane. That's an option. All right, let's keep going. Let's let's look at some more stuff here. Um, so in something like this, where I've got this this point right here, I need the middle of this wall to come up. But well, there's a couple things I could do here. Um, I'm doing this because I'm going, well, yeah, well, what if the ceiling, say it's a truss or something, the ceiling's gonna come off the inside of the wall as opposed to the outside of the wall. Yep, that might be the case. So let's do both of those. In this case, my ceiling is coming off the inside of the wall. On this side is coming off the outside wall. We're gonna take care of both. So how about that? 
So the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out where it needs to cut because what's gonna happen is one edge will go up, one edge will come down. So to do that, I'm just gonna come here, kind of inference over this, drop straight down, and that is where my line needs to break. Oops, I forgot to go into context. Double click to come in here. Let's try that one more time. Hover for a second, inference straight down here to here, it breaks that wall. And now I could actually hover here and just take that straight across and go from here, I have to get in there, to the other side, straight across, boom, like that. So that created something right here that could be moved up. Um, over here, I'd have to do something similar because I'd, I wanna break this, right? So this wall should stay flat. This wall is gonna slope up. So I'll come like that. And then over here, we'll draw a line from, well, I just come on the outside here to here. All right, so what that's gonna allow me to do is on this side, it's super simple. Cause all I do is I grab these two edges and I pull these two up. I'm gonna hit the up arrow to lock to vertical. Take that up like this. And there we go. That is now perfect. It's following that ceiling plane. Over here is gonna be a little weird because we got the same thing going on we had over here. So if I turn on X-ray and come in here, I can see that this bottom line didn't come up with it. So I'd have to select that. I'd have to move that vertically up to here. And then again, like I said, because it had to break that geometry, auto folded some geometry in order to make that happen. I'd have to do a little bit of cleanup like that. But then we have walls falling on the ceiling plane. Um, I said we're gonna talk about different ways to do this, so I'm gonna undo a couple times. Um, I'm gonna turn my X-ray off. And uh, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo all of it. I'm gonna get rid of this line, so I'm gonna go back to where I was at the beginning. Because the other option, what I could do here, is I could put a triangle right here that fills this space up, and then I could push pull it, and kind of inference, see that right there? I could come around to the inside too, and inference through, I could tell exactly how far to go. And then I could just delete this edge and this edge. And I now have a ceiling that goes all the way up, a wall that goes all the way up to the ceiling. Same thing over here. Just trace. Actually, I could, I could have saved myself a little bit of time. Let's do this. Let's grab this face right here. And we'll say option and copy that right over to here. And then we can just push that through. I'll hit the modifier key to create a new face. There we go. Delete those extra edges. And we got the same thing going on there. Um, again, that didn't take care of our little, little guy right here. So same thing, if I wanted that to slope and follow that slope, I would have to grab that edge and scoot it straight up. And uh, unfortunately, I have a little bit of cleanup to do after I did that because uh, because I'm scrambling stuff around. Actually, most of my, my problem there, the cleanup I had to do was because I copied that other piece over. If I had just push pulled that, then all I'd have on that edge is this little edge to erase. So pretty simple. Um, there's something about ceiling planes. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not casting aspersions, as they say. I'm not saying anybody's doing a bad job, but there's something, because I struggled with this too, there's something about ceiling planes that feel like it's gonna be more difficult than it is. Fortunately, like I said, if you just kind of go along with this process of just creating the geometry, it's not too bad. So one of the things that happens in models is we end up breaking geometry, right? So one wall here, one wall separate. In those cases where I have these broken into separate pieces, it actually makes it easier because I can just take these individual pieces and put them where they need to go. Same thing here. If I was to run an edge straight down here, edge straight down, um, I could come across and cut this like this, pull that straight up, cut this like this, pull this edge straight up. I got that somewhere weird. Oh, no, that makes sense. Because this edge should go up to here. And then this edge can go up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this real quick first. So I'm just gonna come straight across like that. And then actually that won't help. That'll make just a different mess. So make that vertical and take that up to there. Don't get too worried when you see that when you're moving stuff and your auto folding and geometry starts jumping around, don't stress immediately. Give it a second. Uh, wait till your command is clear to see where that is. Cause I don't know if you guys saw that. Let me, let me do that again. If I grab this edge and I bring that vertically up to here, see these lines following off to the left. 
that's connecting it back to this point over here. But as soon as I click, it cleans it all up and everything looks good. So don't stress too much when you start having overlapping geometry in the middle of a move command because, uh, yeah, you might be fine. It might, might not be an issue at all. Uh, likewise, I could do the same process here that I did on the last one. I could come down like that, like that, and then like that. And then, whoops, I deleted too much. There we go. Um, then with that, I can just trace that shape. One, two, three, get rid of all that. And then I can just push, pull this through, I'll turn x-ray on, pull that through the other side of the wall, like that, and then we just erase these extra edges out. Um, this is all assuming, by the way, here, this should go up. Uh, this is all assuming, by the way, that I'm modifying flat walls to be drawn into these shapes. If I already know, so let's come over here, let's say, um, you know, let's, let's just come in here and say I haven't even drawn this yet. If this isn't here, right? I could draw this from the beginning by going, okay, so this has come all the way up to the ceiling plane, that's gonna go up to here, then it's gonna come down to this corner, and then it's gonna to drop to the bottom here, and it's gonna close up like that. Oops, it should actually go, yeah, connect that up too. Okay, there we go. And I'll take this and I'll push that in, option uh, four inches, I think is what I modeled that as. And uh, I could do that right from the beginning. So I could right from as a start, as I start modeling, I could model that. These examples all had ceilings separate, but same process works. All right, so inevitably, sooner or later, somebody comes in and asks, okay, but what about if I got a window underneath a break? I hope you already know what the answer is here. It makes absolutely no difference because I can come in, I can put it in, in up here, I push this through four inches and erase that and it doesn't matter at all. In fact, once I've done that, I can take that window and I can scoot it up so it laps up into that space. Um, reason I had a line there. Uh, so I could actually do that too. So it doesn't matter. It's not, you've got to remember that when we model in SketchUp, it's a surface modeler. We're modeling surfaces. It doesn't really know what a wall is. It doesn't know what a ceiling is. Um, it's just looking at geometry. So when I just come in here, I can just put geometry together. I can modify geometry, whatever I need to do to take those flat tops of walls and have them come up and follow my ceiling planes. So, uh, I covered as many different cases as I've heard recently. Um, there's an infinite number of potential ceiling plane configurations against wall types. So uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do an exhaustive list because it would last forever. But these are some common you know setups I see in ceilings. Um, it really doesn't matter. All you got to do is that whatever that plane those those faces that surface is you got to follow. Break your walls so they follow it or run it past and trim them. Either way works. Uh, we'll get you the ceilings that you need. Um, if you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you will be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. Let me know if there is a specific case that isn't covered by the tools we just talked about or if you have a different way of doing that you think is better. Or if you have a totally new idea, nothing to do with this at all, but you think it would make a good video, tell us that in the comments too. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more. I'm showing something you want to see. Thank you.